Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Um, today we're going to talk about Companions. Blackwood is out now. It has been out for a couple days. Um, I spent the first couple days just doing the zone story quest, grabbing the two Companions, uh, checking out the new trial, even going in on Veteran last night. Uh, it's a really fun trial in my opinion. Uh, there will be video on that later as well. And um, yeah, obviously just checking out the new DLC. So what we want to do today is talk about companions. Uh, if you have unlocked them during the quests, they will be in collections, allies, companions. And then you can get either Bastion Halix or Miri Elendis or both of them. Though I would uh, advise you to level up one first and gear one first and then do the other one. So the new zone Blackwood is down here from Shadowfen. It is a really nice zone and you can uh, unlock Miri Elandis, the first companion, up here in the quest in the Doom Vault Vulpinas. And then you can unlock Bastion down here on that island in Deep Scorn Hollow on that quest. Now the quest lines aren't very long. They pretty much just take like 10-15 minutes depending on how fast you want to go through them and if you want to listen to all of the talking that they do. Uh, so you can easily unlock both of them in an hour. And then once you got them, you can summon them in your collections as I just showed you. And then they're there. This is pretty much Bastion Helix, my companion at the moment. Now, you will have a new slot here in your inventory for companion items that is companions gear that can only be used on companions it comes in different traits and sizes as you can see there's medium armor light armor heavy armor there are destruction staves bows whatever you want to equip them with the skill lines are pretty much similar to a dragon knight skill line for bastion and a knight blade skill line for miri and then all of the gear you gather uh you obviously want to farm it in the right traits depending on how you want to set them up you can uh, then put on them by just talking to them and Always going into down. the companion menu. This actually qu took me quite a while to find because I was looking in my own menu and seeing where I can use the companion skills. But the companion menu is very nice. There is such a thing as report, which uh, basically just means if they like you or not. As you can see, mine is on the edge of yellow to green, so I guess that guy kind of likes me. It says he counts me as a friendly acquaintance. So uh, this is your overview with your XP progress. They can be leveled up to level 20, mine is level 11 at the moment, and uh, it will show you how much XP they need to the next um, to the next level, and also how much they like you or view you as a friend or not. Obviously then you have equipment and skills, which we'll get into in a second, and we have collectibles as well. You can put costumes on them, so all of the costumes that you gathered so far for yourself you can use on your companion as well and you can choose mounts for them so all of your mounts even your apex ones or stuff whatever you have gathered so far you can assign to your companion and then whenever you get on your horse the companion will also get on their horse and follow you around all right let's get back into the menu real quick so Bastion is an Imperial and uh, he has that passive tough which increases his max health and his max damage done uh, by 3% each so he makes a really good tank but he also makes a pretty good DD as well. I set mine up as a tank because Miri makes a really good magic or stamina DPS so I decided Miri is going to be my DPS companion and Bastion is going to be my tank companion. Now they do have several skill lines there's a class skill lines as you can see he's sort of a dragon knight then you have ardent warrior this is sort of like stone fist from a dragon knight this is like flame leash or flame whip and then this would be like searing strike which is a flame dot that you can uh, have them use draconic power is more of the tanking skill line you have drake's blood here which is a heal for for him uh, so it's pretty much like green dragon blood from the actual dragon knight skill line then you have the claws here, which the actual Dragon Knight has as well, that immobilizes enemies. And uh, Blazing Grasp, which would be the chain to pull enemies in for stacking. And then you have Radiating Heat, which has a heal here. And then it has uh, the shield here, you know, the, um, I forget the name of the actual Dragon Knight skill. The Igneous Shield, I think it is, right? And then Searing weapons, uh, weapons, which will... Uh, 
actually uh, cause your own light attacks and his light attacks to do uh, and heavy attacks to do 15% more damage for eight seconds. Unfortunately, this has quite a long cooldown, so like 15, uh, about 15 seconds. But who knows? This might be very nice as well for a little damage boost there to your light and heavy attacks. You have all of the uh, weapon skill lines, so you can obviously equip him with whatever you want: uh, two dual wield, one handed shield, two wield, uh, two handed bow destruction stuff, restoration stuff. Whether you want to set them up as a tank or a healer or a DPS. As you can see here in the one handed shield, he actually has a taunt, so this is kind of like Pierce Armor from the actual one hand and skill, uh, shield skill line which will uh, taunt the enemies for 15 seconds. Uh, this will cause them to rush to an enemy and stun them and then on guard is uh, bolstering defenses granting a damage shield that absorbs 25% of their max health. So you can really set these guys up as uh, whatever you want. For me personally, for the things I've unlocked so far I've got the taunt here, I've got the green dragon blood and the shield, so he can heal himself and shield me and uh, himself and uh, taunt enemies. And then I'm about to unlock the other two slots here, which I will probably fill with the um, fighter's guild or undaunted skill lines that they do have as well. So the guild skill lines work a bit differently. You've got uh, Fighter's Guild, Mage's Guild, and Undaunted here. And as you can see, Undaunted, he even has a Blood Altar or a Bone Surge shield that gives synergies to you. So both of these abilities I will probably use because of the synergies. And um, how you level up these skill lines is a bit different. You don't need to collect books or do Dolmens or kill uh, Undead and Daedra or stuff. But you will have to do daily quests with your companion equipped. Now, we're in Mournhold at the moment because it's a nice place to show you. Fighter's Guild is right here, Mage's Guild is right here, and then the Undaunted Enclave is, Enclave is right here. So your daily, the blue arrow, your daily Fighter's Guild quest in here that will require you to do three Dolmens in a certain area, either say Glenumbra or Greenshade or something like that. Then the Mage's Guild quest is in here, which will always require you to grab a relic out of a chest in a public dungeon. And then obviously out here with the Undaunted Enclave, you have not the Pledges, but the fourth guy that has a daily quest. He's in Mournhold, he's in that tent here. This guy, Balgruul, whenever he decides to spawn in, he will give you a daily quest for a delve, and you'll have to collect a couple things and kill the delve boss. So these three quests are the ones you can do every day to level up your companions, Fighter's Guild, Mage's Guild, and Undaunted okay. skill line. And then obviously you have the armor skill lines. I found out recently they only level if you have five pieces of armor equipped. So you can unlock them by putting three pieces. So I have not unlocked the light armor here as you see because I don't need that if I want him to be a tank. Um, you need to put three pieces of light, medium or heavy armor in to unlock the skill lines. But to actually level them up you need to wear five pieces of armor. So you need to wear five pieces of heavy armor to level up the heavy armor skill line and unlock these abilities here if you want to use them. Now let's quickly have a look at the armor skill lines because it's a bit different from the normal uh, from the normal armor skill lines and passives that we have in the game. The heavy armor actually uh, increases the amount of damage you can block and increases your healing received. So that is very nice for tanking just like it would be normally. But then you have the medium armor which uh, increases your damage done by 1% for each, per, uh, for each uh, piece of medium armor equipped. So it might actually be a good choice to even if you want to have your companion be a Magicka uh, damage dealer with a destruction stuff, to just use 5 pieces of medium armor anyway because this will increase uh, your damage done by 1% for each piece of... so you will have 5% five, uh, 5 just increased damage. Because the light armor skill line, I can't show you right now because I haven't unlocked it, unfortunately. Um, not sure I can because I don't think I have gathered five pieces of light armor. No, just one. But yeah, the light armor skill line pretty much just gives you sort of a... It's either a speed boost or a recovery boost. It was something not really too important. Um, so unless you want to use the skill from the light armor skill line, the haste one, which will reduce your damage cooldowns, even for Magicka DPS, it might be better to even wear five pieces of medium armor.
but you'll have to check that out yourself see how it goes um or what you want to do with it it's really all your choice they're not doing huge amounts of damage anyway i think it's like about 10k on a dummy parse if you have your companion next to you uh attacking the thing as well so it's not going to make a big difference i feel like the the tank is a lot more useful especially if you want to farm gear in normal dungeons on your own because you're tired of the the queue for the random dungeons taking too long or for looking them so you can just go into your uh, your normal dungeons like crypt of hearts or whatever you want to farm and uh, bring your tank with you and just kill the ads on your own so i think the tank is very uh very helpful for farming stuff uh yeah and that's pretty much all of these skill lines and how you level them now the gear comes in a lot of different traits as you can see here stuff like focused increases your critical strike rating or his critical strike rating stuff like shattering increases penetration stuff like soothing increases the healing done prophilic uh, prolific increasing your ultimate regener or his ultimate uh, regeneration bolstered reducing the damage taken uh, augmented increases duration of buffs and debuffs quickened reduces ability cooldowns or vigorous increasing max health so whatever you want to use you're gonna have to farm that gear in specific traits I'm at the moment trying to get everything in vigorous for the max health increase because I think that's gonna be the most useful for tanks even though bolster does look nice I think having almost all of the pieces in vigorous is gonna do the most difference because the guy only has like about 30k health and if he needs to tank something that hits quite hard for like 25k or so it's better for him to have more health so i'm trying to get one hand and shield in vigorous all of the uh armor and uh, jewelry in vigorous here at the moment and obviously level up his skill lines um yeah so much for that that's uh the plan for the tank now we'll quickly have a look at miri as well the gear by the way drops from bosses it can be bosses in dungeons it can be bosses at dolmens like dark anchors it can also be um bosses in public dungeons which might be the fastest way to farm things because there's usually about four or five of them in each public dungeon and they're not too hard to kill um so all kinds of bosses or even world bosses the drop rate doesn't seem to be too high to be honest like I've grinded a couple of dolmens with Bastion because his report goes up when you do dolmens so just doing dolmens in Alakir Desert or so will help you uh, become more friendly with him and level him up quite fast as well XP scrolls count as well for your companions by the way so you can just do the normal grind thing that you do in Skyreach or uh, at the Alakir Desert dolmens and level your companion up that way if you wanted to grind it up really fast all right let's have a quick look at miri then uh she's sort of a night blade here as you can see uh which makes her a pretty good dps so you can either use her as a stamina dps because her ultimate is the impeccable shot which is that sort of snipe where they charge at an enemy and then deal 17 or almost 18k physical damage in a single massive bolt shot but then she has other things like shadow slash dealing magic damage setting them off balance or uh the ambush attack dealing magic damage here the warp strike the ghostly inv evasion where she shrouds herself in in a phantasmic aura so they're all kind of from the night blade skill line really soul thief li life absorption dealing magic damage and healing herself that's pretty much like swallow soul i guess and uh yeah I think I'm gonna set her up as a Magicka DPS though, uh, just because I prefer the Magicka theme to the stamina at the moment. And uh, so she's got the destruction stuff on here leveled and the light armor skill line. Ah, here we can actually check it out. Flow. So yeah, the light armor passives increase your healing done and the cooldown of break free. But that's not really too important unless you want her to be a healer. So. The only reason to use this would be the haste skill, which would uh, reduce the cooldowns of all the other abilities, especially if you want to use some that have long cooldowns, like 15, 16 seconds. But other than that, I'd probably just give her five pieces of medium armor for her DPS, uh, which I obviously have to farm still and unlock all of these, because 
I'm trying to get Bastion finished first and then go uh, for Miri and level her up. Um, yeah, so that's about it. Let me know in the comments what you think of the companion system, if you like it, if you think it's unnecessary, if you enjoy it, and what you're going to set up your companions as. Uh, welcome back to the Blackwood DLC once again. It's really nice DLC. Uh, next build video will be this here actually for the Magicka Sorcerer for Blackwood and that should be up by probably tonight or so. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.